No, thank you very much, everyone. Let me quickly take this opportunity and uh, venture into uh, the situation in Leandra, particularly on the matters of land. Uh, we we have had a situation in Leandra for some time as the municipality since we all know that currently we are faced with the challenge of protests with uh, members of the community in that particular area uh, calling for land uh, to be made available uh, immediately. The issue of land in Leandra is not a yesterday's thing, it's been there and uh, there's been a number of issues that have hindered the development. One of the problems that we have faced is that we had started with a process of township establishment uh, in the area of Leandra uh, for an extension 24 uh, and we were almost done with the township establishment processes when we were uh, given an objection by one of the of the com mining companies uh, saying that they have uh, what is called uh, prospecting rights to the area therefore they are going they are intending to mine the area uh, in the in the in the future therefore we cannot be in a position to construct a human settlement in that particular area this then caused a lot of problems because we were certain that we are going to be able to move forward and unfortunately, until until today, the matter is resting with the appeals authority, uh, which will be sitting uh, within the next uh, seven to ten days, uh, where the matter will therefore hopefully be finalised. We are hopeful that we will be able to find one another with the said company. Uh, there are further developments that have been proposed, which is extension 25 and uh, 26 which both those areas are also privately owned uh, land or properties which the developers want to develop that particular area. They are currently busy with township establishment preparations and uh, we are awaiting human settlement to therefore venture into, into that particular space whether they are going to be able to fund uh, the, uh, the bulk infrastructure for that particular or for those particular portions of land so that people can be able to receive uh, accommodation. Uh, this will then also speak to the fact that uh, when private land is being developed, it is not for free. Uh, most of the people will therefore have to buy uh, the land uh, or the sites that they are supposed to be receiving. And therefore, human settlements then becomes the immediate uh, uh, solution uh, should they be having a budget and uh, should they be able to consider such uh, to buy a certain portion or number of sites where they will be able to put either social housing or uh, what is uh, famously known as RDP houses. Um, as the municipality we are having a portion of land uh, which was donated to us by one company uh, a few years back which that particular land is now uh, becoming an alternate uh, to resolving the challenge that uh, we are facing in Leander. And we are hopeful that uh, human settlement is therefore going to come into uh, space and be able to assist us in putting infrastructure and also doing the township establishment, surveying whether the, 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 the space is uh, habitable uh, for human settlements uh, so as we can be able to start with the process. But all these developments that one is touching on, uh, all of them are not going to be less than 18 months to be developed. That is what is most important because uh, putting down infrastructure designs and all of those things takes time. Therefore, that is what we are trying to call for uh, with our communities to say, can they be able to afford us a little bit of time so as we can be able to give feedback on the developments, on uh, the interventions that we are currently trying to bring to the situation at hand. I am in engagement, uh, in engagements with uh, the Department of Human Settlements, uh, particularly the, the MEC. Uh, we are still going to continue with the engagements even today 
so as we see uh, how to accelerate the processes of assisting uh, the people of Leandra. What is most important is that uh, we must take note that government is currently facing a, a financial strain uh, which is causing a lot of problems to fund most of the projects. Uh, we will all be aware that uh, during the State of the Municipal Address I have announced a number of developments that we are doing in the municipality and human settlement uh, is therefore involved in those particular projects. Therefore, it will mean that we'll have to hamper progress on some of the projects in order to, to fund uh, uh, the, some of uh, the new projects that we are trying to venture into. And this is because the department itself, we understand that it is under a serious strain in terms of finances, just as the country is currently facing financial challenges. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'm Rewan Matumba from Sescona Media. I just want to find out um, from you, since when you were addressing the residents, you said there is land which you have identified uh, on the office road. Um, maybe the question might be, why did you call, why did you not consider that before even the the people decide to protest, um, especially when you saw that the land which you banked on, now there was objection and there were lots of issues. Why didn't you consider that land? No, thank you very much. Uh, maybe what is important is that we are trying to accelerate development. Uh, the land that we are talking to now is a green land. Uh, which means that there is no any form of plan that is in place. The other areas that we are talking to already are at an advanced stage, therefore they will take a, a lesser time to, to proclaim and develop, uh, rather than the one we are talking to now, which is going to start from the, uh, the, the inception uh, phase, which is planning, surveying whether the land is uh, habitable, and all of those things which will take far longer than uh, what you already have. If tomorrow we can be able to sit down with the set company and resolve the matter of extension f uh, 24, studies are already there, we can have the land proclaimed in the shortest period of time and we can start putting infrastructure, but we can't uh, on that specific land because we still have to do studies. Uh, uh, that's why I'm mentioning that that is the reason that we had to delay that particular process while focusing on accelerating this one. Unfortunately, uh, we had not reached any form of agreements with the said company. And my last question, I know that um, it might be like a complicated question, but sometimes we need to look at the way residents also respond or react towards the municipality like we know that uh, Leandra they've got the they use the electricity from ESCO and what you get from them is um, the payments of the water and rates are you satisfied with the way the Leandra residents pay their rates of course not of course not look uh, for us to be able to, to, to sustain the municipality, we need to receive income. And our income is based on uh, services being paid, rates and taxes being paid. That is how we are able to develop infrastructure and also maintain infrastructure and be able to give good services. Unfortunately, that particular community is uh, paying uh, at a rate that uh, one can safely conclude that it's a very unattractive, if I can use that word, unattractive rate of payment. And uh, it's causing a delay in some of the things that we are supposed to have moved with uh, by now because uh, by them not being able to pay a, a higher percentage, uh, it means that we are unable to buy new trucks. Uh, for waste removal, we are unable to uh, resurface more roads and build new roads because we have to take uh, money from the other areas and be able to patch on the areas where there is less rate uh, payment. 
so it is a, a matter of concern and we will continue to to persist in asking our communities uh, in all areas to pay their rates and services because that's how we're going to be able to service them properly. Uh, thank you. Executive Mayor, um, my concern is slightly different in the sense that we have these massive people coming saying that they need land. Um, I'm concerned that sometimes we have professional protesters and when I say professional protesters, I don't say there's any bad against any of those, but um, we have a group of people protesting now. And when it is time to, let's say, hand out the, the RTPs, how do we ensure that the guys are, that is now protesting will be the recipients later? Um, I, I get the feeling that um, there's a few people that were very upset um, like you and I have discussed and, and maybe um, not throwing the thought around too much maybe there is some other meaning behind this whole protest but I get the feeling that there's only a few that's protesting but the protest grew in popularity um, as it as it went further and and there's a lot of people that come from from the normal houses within um, Lebuang into this protest so how do we ensure that once we go through this whole process First of all, we, are, we have the right people identified, and then second of all, would that then be su sufficient to stop further processes in 18 months' time? Because I get the feeling we're going to sit in the same, same problem in 18 months' time, and if we go and review the footage, we'll see some of the same faces complaining about the same things while we are making a lot of plans. No, no, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Fanestia. I think that one of the the biggest challenge uh, that we must acknowledge and accept is that generally our people are, are, are challenged financially or economically. Uh, they are poorer because of the pandemic that has uh, taken place and it has affected the number of households. Uh, but what is important, what, uh, which I picked up when engaging with the communities during the, the IDP consultations is that first and foremost, our people seem not to understand who qualifies first and foremost for an RTP. Uh, it will be important that we enlighten our people so that they understand who then is supposed to get an RTP. An RTP is a social uh, housing uh, which is meant for those which cannot be able to provide for themselves. Uh, the priority is normally given to the elderly, the, the pensioners, uh, secondly the disabled uh, individuals and also the child-headed families. Those are the first uh, priority areas that we focus on when dealing with allocations. The other area will be the military veterans. Uh, those are the four areas that are supposed to be prioritized for RTPs. Uh, that is why as the municipality we do not uh, consolidate the list of who must occupy. We just gather information submitted to the Department of Human Settlements whom they do the vetting of whether uh, those applicants are qualifying to get an RTP or not. And unfortunately on your question to be specific, uh, I don't want to say this, but uh, it happens sometimes that you get uh, professional protesters mm. uh, where you'll find uh, you go to Leandra, they are there protesting, you go to Mzino and the same faces are there, uh, you go to Ember, the same faces are there. Uh, I don't know what informs uh, such individuals to form part of all the struggles or the protests that uh, uh, happen within our, our geographic uh, area. Maybe someday I would have the answers if one of them can be able to sit with me and explain. Thank you. Uh, last, last question. I know that you've met with, with um, some of the representatives. Strangely enough, when, when I was there at, at the site, we saw other people engaging with, with a group, and the group that met with you is not the same group as that that were um, 
talking to them, what I saw. Um, is this the right people that we are dealing with? And then secondly is what is your thoughts? Do you see that within the next day or so that the protest in um, Lebuang would go away? Maybe the, the first thing that must be indicated is that from the beginning of the unrest on Friday, uh, a week ago, uh, there's been no person who had uh, assumed the responsibility to lead the protest. It has been said that it's a community protest. And this has caused a lot of frustration for us because we wanted to engage so that we understand what are the challenges that are facing the community so that we can be able to respond. Only when I went to, to address the community itself and hear from the community on Monday last week uh, that there was uh, uh, one individual who was uh, a spokesperson but uh, while speaking to him, he would indicate that he's not the leader of this thing. Therefore, you'd ask yourself who exactly is leading this particular process. Up until uh, one had to take a conscious decision to engage stakeholders. So yesterday I met with stakeholders in Leandra uh, to, to, to address them, give them the detailed briefing of the situation and hear their views. Only then did I get to understand that, uh, yes, uh, government had uh, been in fault uh, for not providing uh, much earlier in terms of the information, but at the same time, uh, it is inconclusive that uh, the protests themselves are about land only. Uh, there might be other things that are involved. That is why you'll engage any grouping that feels that they want to engage you on the matter. So up to so far, I'm not sure whether mm -hmm. the right people are the ones that I'm engaging. I, I'll make a closing remark from my side is that um, whatever we've dealt with in the past, you're right. It's the first time that land is the major issue. And when I engaged with them on, on that bridge, um, they were very adamant, first of all, that I'm not from the police. And then second of all, um, that they have no leader. And there's no protest that has no leader. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm also very concerned that there might be a, another force behind this um, and not necessarily what we are seeing on the face value. Exactly. Level? My only last comment is um, I we appreciate your time. Um, it's always easy to to talk to the community if you avail yourself. But since uh, you came into office, you have always been available. You opened your office for us. Now the question is: the community can they come and knock at your door at any time and? talk about the issues before they get out of hand. Thank you very much. I think it's part of the, the closing remarks from your side and my side <laughs> in saying that, look, um, our government is a, a representative democracy. And uh, we are here as representatives of the very same community. Uh, no door should be shut mm. uh, from community members being able to confront their leaders and speak to them uh, so as they can be able to to even input and give direction to to the shape of the development of their municipality this municipality doesn't belong to me it doesn't belong to uh, councillors it belongs to all of us who are citizens within the municipality uh, the doors are open the only problem is that I don't know how, but uh, seemingly uh, people are starting to neglect that there are departments that are responsible for specific services and they want to st come straight to the executive mayor. It's not possible. My diary is currently sitting with 218 uh, appointments. Now you can ask yourself, then when do I do what I'm supposed to be doing, which is a strategic uh, uh, management and oversight? 
uh, that's when the challenge then comes because I'm always in, in meetings. I don't get time to go and see projects, whether they are being implemented as reports are being given by our administration. So I'm requesting that uh, to each and everyone who has issues, raise the issues with the relevant officials. Should it not be addressed, go to the political heads of those departments. Only after the matters have not been resolved there, you will escalate them to the office of the executive mayor. If you have proposals and on initiatives, in particular young people, as we are in the month of young people, let them go to those departments. Uh, if they are hitting a, a brick wall, then this office is going to intervene from time to time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I request uh, to our community to have calm, uh, patience. Their needs are understood and we are working on them and dealing with the issues that we're supposed to deal with. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Executive Mayor. And um, we hope it stops soon. I'm very hopeful.